Hi, I'm Pat Corbett, your host this month on New Jersey and You. Come with us as we visit some historic towns in the southern New Jersey Bay Area. Also, we'll be traveling throughout the state to visit some lighthouses in commemoration of National Lighthouse Month. So join us, why don't you, this month on New Jersey and You. See the light, catch a bite, have a fight. This month on New Jersey and You. Jersey and You, brought to you in part by New Jersey Bell Yellow Pages. Hi, I'm Pat Corbett for Noreen Bodman, and I'll be your host this month on New Jersey and You, a show about the people, places, and events in New Jersey. Behind me is the Salem Oak, one of the most historic sites in the southern New Jersey Bay Area. But before we tell you about the Oak and the town of Salem, Let's begin our journey over in Morristown. It's southeast of here on the Delaware Bay. Situated on the Morris River, Morristown flourished as a sea town in the 18th and early 19th centuries. This town has roots of a hardy and religious people whose worship was also tied to the sea. The church steeple was a guide to mariners. The Morristown Methodist Church itself, a historic site, has within it a stained glass memorial window dedicated to the 22 captains and mates from Morristown who lost their lives at sea. Other beautiful artwork is evident throughout the town like this fine example of intricate wrought ironwork on this lovely home, or the fancy woodwork on the headquarters of the Morristown Historical Society. There are many older houses here, dated and named for their original owners. The Morristown Academy, a two-room elementary school, was in continuous use for more than a century. You'll also find a number of fine antique shops and specialty shops, as well as a cozy 19th century bed and breakfast. For more information, call the Morristown Historical Society at 609-785-1391. The Handy Soft Shell Crab Company is helping to rewrite the history of the Delaware Bay. Jeff Taws explains Handy's influence on the crabbing heritage in Port Norris, New Jersey. So Handy built this complex in 1988, spring of 1988, and I have 800 of these shedding tanks. And what we do, we lease these tanks out to the watermen. And we also supply the boxes, the trays, everything they need to package the soft shell crab. And then they bring it to me, and of course on my loading dock we buy the crabs, and from there we ship them around the world throughout the country. For the crabber to identify the difference between a shutter and a hard crab, he must notice the swimming paddle on the crab. On the paddle it shows a cloud of different colors, it may be white, pink, or red. 
The white cloud shows the crab would be shed within seven days. The pink cloud would show within three to four days. And the red cloud, which is, this is a red cloud here, would show it to being shed within a day. These crabs also grow 25% once they shed their outer shell. This is one coming out of its shell, or this is one that has already came out of its shell. We promised you at the top of the show that we'd return to Salem. And so here we are standing in front of the Salem County Courthouse. For nearly 200 years, the legal machinery of Salem County functioned out of this building. So let's start our tour of Salem right inside. Portions of the old courthouse date back to 1735, but it was almost totally rebuilt in 1817. The decor gives testament to the Indian heritage and the strong agricultural background of this area. It was on the steps of this courthouse in 1820 that Colonel Robert Gibbon Johnson ate a tomato to show that they were not poisonous. It's a peaceful town filled with pretty parks and ever active culturally and socially. One historic building stands by another, just as the first Presbyterian church stands overlooking the historic Grant House. Salem's most famous site is the 500-year-old Salem Oak. This national landmark stands as a reminder of Salem's rich heritage. It was under this oak that John Fenwick signed a treaty with the Lenny Lenape Indians and founded Salem, then part of Fenwick's colony. The old oak has weathered the years quite well and is a majestic sight in the midst of the Friends burial grounds, which dates back to the 1600s. In view from the shade of the Salem Oak sits the Salem Oak Diner, a perfect place to stop for a meal on a visit to Salem. The diner is a throwback to days when dining cars dotted the land. Just seeing this diner brought back memories, and since it was time for lunch, I had a chance to sample some of the great food, which is just as delightful as the atmosphere. For more information, call 609-935-1305. Inside the Grant House are 20 rooms filled with antiques reflecting the heritage of the county. This house is actually a composite of four buildings as seen from the courtyard. Also in the courtyard stands the 1735 office of John Jones. This is the oldest standing law office in the United States. Inside the Grant House, this room dates back to the 1600s. The Salem County Historical Society has arranged one of the finest historical museums in the state with many outstanding pieces. Down the street from the Grant House stands a tribute to New Sweden and the Swedish heritage of Salem County. This sod house is a copy of one built in 1638 and is made completely without nails. Call the Greater Salem Chamber of Commerce at 609-935-1415. When visiting the town of Salem, spend a night bathed in the heritage of the area. The George Abbott House, built in 1845, is a 10-bedroom plantation house standing on 53 beautiful acres. The property, known as Tide Mill Farm, sits on the waterfront in the midst of bountiful natural beauty. You'll find some leftover evidence from the days when this was a working farm and home to Abbott Dairies. The interior of the house has a beauty to match that on the outside. Tall ceilings and rich woodwork lead upstairs to large, comfortable bedrooms where you can have a night's peace before rising to a farm fresh breakfast. The dining room is filled with antiques passed down and preserved through the Abbott family. Your hosts, George and Emmeline Abbott, will be happy to share their family history and the history of Salem with you. Perhaps the most intriguing bit of Abbott family history lies beneath some of the floorboards in the kitchen. 
previously speculated upon, but only recently uncovered, this room is reported to be a safe room in the Underground Railroad. Slaves escaping to freedom would travel up the creek in the dark of night and be hidden and fed in this cramped, secretive place before being whisked further north. For more information on the Abbott Tide Mill Farm, call 609-935-2798. Every week, our water has to pass more than 335 tests before it can undergo this one. For water quality, call 1-800-648-SAND, 1-800-648-SAND. Millions of new Americans stood on the deck and cried when they first saw her. To them, she was proof that they were now free. New Jersey Governor Tom Kane asked you to come visit the Lady in the Harbor this summer. Ferry boats leave from Liberty State Park and Jersey City every hour. To get to Liberty State Park, just take exit 14B off the New Jersey Turnpike, and there's plenty of parking. Millions came halfway across the world to see her. Won't you come halfway across the bay? The Alexander Grant House is also home to the Salem County Historical Society. And coincidentally enough, over in Greenwich, the Cumberland County Historical Society has its home in the Gibbon House, which has family ties to this one. The Cumberland County Historical Society has under its jurisdiction a number of historic sites in the township of Greenwich. This, we're standing in front of what is perhaps the oldest agricultural building in the state of New Jersey, a Swedish granary built in the year of 1650. Also on this property is the Gibbon House, uh, which is unique in the fact that the brick is laid in the Flemish bond pattern in the United States, uh, only in Cumberland and Salem counties are any number of these houses found. The portraits on the wall are those of Dr. Eli Bateman and his wife. Dr. Bateman is a descendant of Benjamin Rush, who was the founder of the School of Medicine at the University of Pennsylvania. Of particular interest in the kitchen, is the size of the fireplace. The man of the family during the evening sat in the fireplace while the women continued to work. During the colonial period, there were no dining rooms. All meals were eaten in the kitchen. The man of the family sat in a chair at the head of the table, which was called the board. And that is the origin of the term chairman of the board. After the revolution, better class families had a dining room, and the table is set with a Chinese export. For further information, you may call area 609-455-4055. The Gibbon House is just the beginning of the heritage that is Greenwich. This area has numerous 18th century buildings worth visiting. Many, like the Old Stone Tavern, are private residences in wonderful condition at 200 years old. Across the street is the home of the Wood family, which sits near the Wood store. This is the first store in what was later to be the Wawa chain, decades later. Also in this heritage-rich town stands a stone schoolhouse which was also used to train militia in the War of 1812. But the most famous slice of history to come out of Greenwich is the famous tea burning of 1774. In fact, the pronunciation Greenwich is born of defiance to the English Greenwich. This monument stands as a tribute to the local patriots who seized and burned a shipment of British tea in Greenwich shortly after the Boston Tea Party.
For more information on Greenwich, call the Greenwich Historical Society at 609-455-4055. The Delaware Bay is the site of some of the finest sport fishing in the region. And in the town of Fortescue, you'll find a fine sport fishing fleet of both charter and open boats. Not far from Greenwich, where the Delaware Bay receives the Fortescue Creek, sits the Fortescue State Marina. Fortescue, New Jersey proclaims itself the weak fish capital of the world, which is no surprise when you see the fine fleet of open and charter boats at the marina. There are boats of all sizes available for day and evening fishing excursions. For fishing opportunities of all types, come to the Fortescue Marina or write to the Fortescue Businessmen's Association, Box 35, Fortescue, New Jersey, 08321. For a unique and exciting fishing opportunity, you may want to head out to the Delaware Bay on board the Bonanza 2. Captain Tom Ronchetti and his able crew will take you out on a relaxing trip. Don't get too comfortable. The action picks up when the sharks bite. The Bonanza is fully equipped to help you find and land these predators of the deep. It's an exciting experience to land a shark, whether it be a small brown or a larger sand tiger. The Bonanza runs all open boat fishing April through October. The evening shark fishing excursions are limited and reservations are required. For more info, call 609-447-4490. From the wide open expanses of the Delaware Bay, we take you now to preview an event in a more metropolitan setting. The city of Newark will once again open its arms to welcome people of all ethnic backgrounds on Saturday, September 23rd for the fifth annual Newark Festival of People. This multi-ethnic event features music, merchandise, and foods from many nations. The day's events, free to the public, will take place from noon to 7 p.m. at the Public Service Plaza and Military Park in downtown Newark. For more information, call 201-824-FEST. Every week in New Jersey, we conduct more than 335 tests on water along our shore. We have helicopter patrols monitoring our shoreline all summer for any signs of illegal dumping. And we enforce the most stringent ocean water quality standards in the nation. When it comes to keeping our shore clean and safe, there's really only one thing more anyone can do. For water quality, call 1-800-648-SAND, 1-800-648-SAND. Rebuilding the old New Jersey Division of Motor Vehicles took nearly three years of hard work, but today we've turned a corner. We're pledged to quality service. That's why we call ourselves Motor Vehicle Services. Our toll-free telephone numbers are saving motorists millions of dollars, and our regional service centers and model agencies allow drivers to transact more business closer to where they live or work. New Jersey Motor Vehicle Services. We start everything we do with the same question. How can we help? Dixieland Jazz, magicians and mimes, all to celebrate Exchange Place Day. Beginning at 11.30 a.m. Wednesday, September 13th, New Jersey Governor Thomas Kane will preside over the dedication of the new Exchange Place Path Station. Festivities will fill the Exchange Place and even spill over to the waters at Owen Grundy Park. Scheduled events include a tugboat race and Burt Parks will host a beauty contest. For more information, call 201-420-7755. The Finns Point Light, also known as the Fort Mott Light, features a rare wrought iron construction and a Greek Revival doorway. Speaking as a sailor, I can surely appreciate the importance as well as the beauty of these New Jersey lighthouses. This iron monolith, known as the Fort Mott Range Light, or Finns Point Rear Range Light, is unlike the rest of New Jersey's lights in its appearance. On the other end of our bay coast sits East Point Lighthouse. Located at the mouth of the Morris River, this early 1800 structure paints a pretty picture as it looks over the bay.
South of East Point Lighthouse, in fact, New Jersey's southernmost lighthouse is the Cape May Point Lighthouse. Situated in Cape May Point State Park, this light is operated by the U.S. Coast Guard. It's light visible 24 miles out to sea. The Mid-Atlantic Center for the Arts keeps the light open to the public, and if you're up to the 218-step task, a climb to the top affords beautiful views of the surrounding beaches and bird sanctuaries. Traveling north along the Atlantic coast, the next light you come upon will be the Hereford Inlet Lighthouse. Like many of our lighthouses, this quaint building in North Wildwood is listed on the state and national registers of historic places. This was one of the few lights where the keeper and his family lived in the building, warning passing ships to be alert for the treacherous inlet and dangerous sandbars. Your tour of New Jersey's lights next takes you to the heart of Atlantic City and Absecon Lighthouse. Now decommissioned, this light was built in 1857 from a design by Lieutenant George Meade, who is also famous for leading the Union armies at Gettysburg. Another Meade design is perhaps our most well-known light, Barnegat Lighthouse. Old Barney, at the northern tip of Long Beach Island, is situated on a state park. It's said that Captain Kidd may have hidden here, and old gold coins occasionally wash up on beach. Although sometimes closed for repairs, the light is often open for a spiral climb, which will afford some beautiful views. Speaking of beautiful views, the twin lights of Navasink offer a panoramic vista of the Sandy Hook area from Highlands, New Jersey. The lights themselves are beautiful to look at. These beams were so bright, they kept cows awake at night, and so blackout panels were installed in 1898. The site also offers a museum, slide and film shows, and the spectacular view from the medieval-style towers. One of the sites visible from the Twin Lights is our nation's oldest operating lighthouse, the Sandy Hook Lighthouse, in use since 1764. Although the interior is closed to the public, there's plenty to see and do when you visit this light, as it's situated on the grounds of Fort Hancock at Gateway National Recreation Area's Sandy Hook Unit. These are just a few of New Jersey's lighthouses. August is National Lighthouse Month, a perfect time to visit these and the rest of New Jersey's lights. We'll be right back, but first, here's a preview of an exciting event coming up in September in New Jersey. Clowns, 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 and still more clowns. There'll be over 300 of them, that's right. Count them, over 300 zany guys and gals will be clowning around on the boardwalk in Seaside Heights, New Jersey, September 15th, 16th, and 17th at Clown Fest 89. Yes, sir, Seaside Heights is playing host to clowns from all over the world, as well as vendors who'll be selling clown shoes, costumes, props, wigs, makeup, balloons, and if that's not enough, we'll have seminars and classes on makeup, ballooning, the biz, magic, ventriloquism, puppetry, basic clowning, and of course, much, much more. If you're into clowns, ever dreamt of being one, or if you're already one, Seaside Heights is the place to be. Come on out and meet Vapo, Derby, Dipsy, Mr. Giggles, Choppers, Spike the Wonder Chicken, and all the rest of the gang at the 8th National Clown Festival on the Boardwalk in Seaside Heights, New Jersey, September 15th, 16th, and 17th. Ever wonder what could happen when you get hit in the eye with a ball? First, your cornea is lacerated, the lens dislocated, severe hemorrhaging occurs, the retina detached, and all vision may be lost. Unless you're wearing safety glasses, don't play games with your eyes. A message from the National Society to Prevent Blindness. New Jersey vacations should bring back happy memories, not sad ones. That's why New Jersey has a mandatory seatbelt law, as well as one of the toughest drunk driving laws in the country. It's our way of trying to make sure when you see New Jersey, it won't be from a hospital bed or a jail cell.
It may seem like an inconvenience for you to get an eye examination. After all, you have to make an appointment with an eye care professional. You have to take time out from your busy schedule. And you may have to pay for an examination. But if you feel that's an inconvenience, just imagine what it's like to be blind. Help save the sights of America. Get your eyes checked at least every other year. you celebrate August as National Lighthouse Month, call for your free See the Lights brochure today. This handsome brochure features beautiful pictures of many of New Jersey's lights. For information, call 609-292-2470. The State of New Jersey Division of Travel and Tourism has produced two travel videos featuring things to do and places to go in New Jersey. For more information on day trips and state parks, consult the community interest pages in your new New Jersey Bell telephone directory. This handy resource tool can be found right in your very own home. So there it is. We've had a little bit of heritage, a little bit of fishing, and an awful lot of fun in New Jersey's Delaware Bay area. So be sure to include this wonderful region in your family's travel plans, whether it's an overnight trip or perhaps an extended visit. I think you'll have a really good time. And be sure to tune in in September when we introduce you to the pleasures of fall, Jersey style, on New Jersey and you. <laughs>